Behold, the Bulwark of Shoulders. Are you impressed? Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a quick chat about a ton of updates that have come to 9.1 and also the speculative teased leaked release date of July 1st. That does kind of fall in line with our July-August expectation from many months ago. Uh, during BlizzCon Line is when we called that and it does seem to fall in line, yet it is speculative, it is a leak. Uh, so we're never going to say anything until Blizzard says something. I will point out here, in the past I have had direct messages from people involved with Blizzard that a patch... A raid is expected to be here. Certainly when we're talking about World First Race and things like that, it's kind of important with the events that occur around that, that people know when the raid is coming. And so we do tend to get some information sometimes uh, that when the patch is coming, we're not allowed to say anything, yet that isn't this. This is just something that's been leaked out and Blizzard hasn't said a word, as far as I know, to anyone about when 9.1 is coming. So July, August does seem to still be in line. Uh, they've also started to add in the re reward systems for all the all the bump they're adding in 9.1. Uh, we have now seen the more touched armor has appeared in Corthia. I will do a couple of updates on Corthia for you. One, the gameplay and what it is has not changed yet. Uh, during my interview with Ian, they did say there was a lot more to come here. It has not happened yet. I've been doing the dailies every single day in Corthia. Yes, I am nearly exalted with the brand new faction. Uh, I am probably not going to do this on live, at least in the rate I've been doing it here on the PTR. But every single day, I assure you, I am on Corthia and I am doing my daily quests to see exactly what will happen there. Uh, as well as farming Torghast and things like that in order to make sure you guys have up-to-date information. Ooh, I have an exalted character in it that will not matter at all when live comes out. More touched armor is going to be your catch-up armor. We did show off the items earlier in our review cycle of 9.1 where your reputation will allow you to upgrade these items by purchasing um, little items that make them better by like 20%. Uh, so that's going to be your casual sort of catch-up system for gear during 9.1 along with doing things like the assaults which occur every few days which rewards some level of gear to go alongside with that i actually don't have any of the items that have dropped yet yet other people have they do seem to be rng for the moment as do the daily quest rewards you might remember we talked about corthium the legendary item that is going to allow us to craft the new base pieces and things like that that still seems to be RNG. I have done the dailies here every single day. Uh, and I have, I'm just checking out, I have six. <laughs> I have six of them. Uh, which is not a lot, uh, considering the early recipes involved like 20 or so. But this is still up in the air. And I know a lot of the gold makers are still looking into exactly how this system works. I know some people who have 12. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether they're going to standardize that or, or that daily quest will be up. You know, like the Divine Bell. If that quest is up, let everybody know to go and get it. It does not appear to be that so far, uh, but we will wait and see. Uh, on top of that, we now have cosmetics in Torghast. Yes, we do. We have cosmetics that are dropping in the Maw. So I have, have, I have had the back piece drop for me, uh, the Maw style one. And also now you can buy cosmetics during your Torghast run is how this is going to work. How do you get them? They are 300 Phantasma, the resource you collect in Torghast once you get to a broker level. So there are two brokers per six, uh, five floor run as it is now. Uh, you can buy them there instead of buying powers. So you can buy, they're usually selling two pieces of transmog gear. So far it's shoulders, at least on my hunter. And you can buy them, so you'd need 600 Phantasma to buy both of them. Good news, uh, if you can't afford them because you didn't get enough Phantasma on that run, you can run Torghast again <laughs> to pick them up as well. Uh, so as long as you have Phantasma on you, you can buy them. So if you're not interested in actually finishing your run or you just want to pick up the transmog, uh, then you can run Torghast again, even after you've got your Soul Cinders in order to pick up your transmog pieces from there. They're kind of interesting. They don't match the other outdoor more stuff. Uh, they're very big. <laughs> All of them are very big and severe, but it does kind of match the armor that is in Torghast, it's, Transmog is subjective, right? It is subjective. You like it, you don't like it. I don't care. You don't care. It doesn't matter. If you like it and you can think you can do something good with it, fair enough. If uh, if you don't, you don't have to buy it. There you go. But it is cool that it is just purchasable. I hope they don't lock this behind something in the talent tree, which is what I kind of expect them to do. 
uh, is to uh, do that kind of process is to say, well, you unlock the vendors will now sell super armor or things like that. Um, in fact, it might even be a blessing. We saw that there are some blessings that are dealing with armor, so we'll have to wait and see on that. On that note of Torghast, I have unlocked a lot of the talent tree. I know we've done a lot of stuff on Torghast recently, but I do want to let you know that the talent tree right now makes Torghast so insanely easy. It's crazy. Uh, which is good news for most of you who want this out of the way as quickly as possible to get your soul cinders. I went from kind of struggling to do layer 12 in a good time. Obviously, I wanted the ranking at the end to see what would happen. Uh, to now being able to absolutely smash that to pieces. Really just tear through it like an absolute gun. It's crazy how strong the, the system makes you. This is obviously to offset the people who don't have any gear. That's what it's for. So if you are one of those guys who is very worried, and I still think this is a bad idea by Blizzard, that they are tying this ranking system to unlocking later layers, what I can tell you is even in average gear, once you get a few of the talents rolling in the box of many things, you start smashing it to pieces. For reference, layer 12 says it require, it's recommended for item level 230. I have 222 on my hunter, and I clean that place in like 10 minutes. I still don't get 5 stars though, Buzz. Like, I get absolutely everything, and kill everything, and speed run it like a demon, and still don't get 5 stars. I have no idea how that system works, or whether there's something wonky going on there, but that is the nature of the beast. Our final note here is, of course, that they have put in a system that you have seen in the past where you can transfer Soul Ash, which is going to craft your t up to 235 legendaries, into Torghast, so you can transfer it to alts. Now, the way this works is you buy it from the final vendor before the level 5 boss. That is the only place it is currently available. So you do have to get to layer 5. It will cost you 1,500 to move 1,300. Yeah, so it's the same as we had with war resources, things like that. Slightly more expensive for your main to transfer it to an alt character. Um, I would love an alternative here, Blizz. Considering, I mean, my perspective on this stuff is that who cares if somebody has a legendary on their other characters that is two levels below the the current one can it not be for phantasma it's just a small request like if i save my phantasma that i earn in torgas to send to my other characters and i say this on the back of if my character has unlocked the box of many things making torgas really really easy and i just don't need any powers and i'm also like not into transmog or i've already got the transmog why not allow me to send Soul Ash to my other characters? I don't see the problem. It's one of those things that Blizzard likes as a progression system. And from that perspective, I do understand what they're saying. It's like, well, you, sh you shouldn't be able to farm this re very easily. And I say, why not? Why not? If I want to use my main character to spam Torghast all day to get my alt a low-level legendary, what is the problem? <laughs> I don't see it as a problem. The simple fact... And the reason I bring this up is... If you can, and you can, because I have done this, do layer 12 in a 220 character, which is not going to be hard to get in 9.1 because the gear is going up. And I can afford to spend 600 Phantasma. And in fact, in one run, I spent 900 Phantasma because I got three of the transmog pieces in a single run while still smashing that place to bits. I'm just not going to need more power in, in Torghast at all. So why can't I just send... So why can't I buy Soul Ash with Phantasma? So I can send at least get my ult a low level legendary. And that's what it is. It's gonna be a low level legendary. It's gonna be 235, but that's in a world where these legendaries go up past that. That's my take on it. It's the only request I would make is like it would be far, far better if I could just spend Phantasma on it. And if I want to spend all day just grinding out Torghast in order to send low level legendaries to my alts, what's the problem with that? I don't see the issue with it. I think that would be absolutely fine. It's okay as well to spend your soul ash because that's what the currency is right now. It's soul ash, but eventually that dries up. I personally, I think that would be fine if we have a choice. If we could spend Phantasm on Transmog, we should be able to spend it on these low-level legendaries for our alt characters. It's really not fun running Torghast over and over again on different characters. I wish, I wish it was. I wish the power diversity and the temptation was there, but it isn't. So if it's a case of I would prefer to take my main character just to grind and grind and grind just to get a legendary effect ground up, I think that's cool too. My personal take on it. All right, guys, so those are the big updates I want to give you now. I know some of you are asking, uh, I've seen it, like, can you talk about the class balancing? What's going to be good in 9.1? How are the new legendaries looking, especially the Covenant legendaries? Those things are being changed on a week-by-week -week basis. They're just so in flux that, honestly, it's a waste of time me talking to you about it right now. 
Um, they, we've not only done one raid test session. There's more raid testing this week, and that's what that, like dictates a lot of the changes that you'll see in the game. If I make a video on that stuff, it's just going to be misleading if you don't catch the next like five videos that are going to change and alter that perspective. And it's a bit clickbaity for me. I personally find that stuff very clickbaity because it's so early in the patch that it's a waste of your time. So when it's closer to 9.1 launch, yeah, we will look at it. We absolutely will look at it when things are more stable. But it's the same as the Shadowlands Alpha stuff. We've said this in the past. We stand here. I can make 20 videos on the changes to like the Kyrian Legendary for Paladins. I can do that. But I'm not going to because it's just a waste of your time. I'm just going to be like, and now it does this. And then the next video is now it does this and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so when it's a bit more set in stone, that's when we'll look at it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you again. All right. Bye-bye.